Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We're looking at the I squared C peripheral on the MSP430, and we're kind of walking through the protocol and the message structure of this particular serial interface before we get into actually looking at how to program it. So in this video, we're going to look at what I call addressing slave registers. So if you remember uh, from our prior video, uh, you have an I squared C master, I squared C slave, and they both have there's two lines, clock and data, SCK, SCK and SDA. They both have their pull-ups <laughs> because of the open drain output architecture. And if you remember, the master initiates a start, provides a slave address, and each and every slave has a hard-coded slave address. After the master sends the slave address, it sends the read or write signal indicating what it wants to do. If there's a slave out there, uh, it then sends an acknowledge, and then data is transferred, either, whether it's a read or a write. And then after the data is transferred, there's an ACK, or sometimes a NACK, and then there's a stop bit. Remember, everything is uh, synchronous to these pulses, these clock pulses, and you can count the periods of a message and know exactly what's going on at any given bit field. Now, Thinking about an uh, I2C C slave, you can kind of think of it as something that has data. So you're either going to write uh, write to a storage element or read from a storage element. And so obviously everything is is stored in what looks like a register. Okay. And so you can kind of have a model of this I2C C slave as a as a single register or multiple registers. And in the simplest case, uh, you would just have one register or one field. So let's look at how you would write to something, okay? So first of all, the master initiates the message by sending a start a start bit, provides the slave address. In this situation, let's do an example where this is hard code to 68, so we have real values. Send 68 and then says, I'm gonna write. The slave says ACK, the meaning that I'm 68 and I'm here. Then the master sends the data, in this case, let's say it's BB, and then the Slave says, ACK, I got it. And then the master says, I'm done writing. And it stops the thing. Notice that since there was only register, it's not, you didn't need this notion of like register addresses, okay? If there were multiple register addresses in this device, you would have to have some way to tell it. It's like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to write to register zero or I want to write to register seven. Uh, and it, most devices, you know, have multiple registers in them, most slaves. Uh, there are examples though that just have a single slave uh, register. One, an example might be like a, consider a multiplexer. Okay, so you have an I squared C multiplexer where you configure it using I squared C. You might just write the select data or the select line values into one register and you're done. That's all you ever do. Same thing with a demultiplexer. Some temperature sensors that are very simple uh, have this model too, where they're just taking temperature and then converting it into a value and they just stuff it in one register and then you just read from it. So when you have a single register out here, you don't need to do anything with providing an address to tell the slave which address, or excuse, which register you're looking at because there is only one. Okay, so let's look at uh, what it looks like when you have multiple registers. So it, you get an I2C device and you look at it and you notice that it needs to be configured as a slave and you go on its data sheet and you look through uh, what it does, and then you look at its storage elements. And for this case, let's just say that we had a four register uh, device and it has addresses. And so there's addresses 0, 0, 0, 001, 0, 02, and 0, 03. So if you want to access a specific register, the master needs to somehow tell the slave which register address. So it needs to send more information in the message than just saying, I want to read and write and then data is transferred. So <clears throat> let's look at the write transaction first, okay? When you write to a specific register address, you actually provide the register address as the first piece of information transferred, and then you provide the, the data that is to be written to that particular address. So let's walk through this frame right here, or this message. It, the master says, I want to send information into register address three. So it initiates the message with a start bit. It then sends out the slave address and what type of transaction it wants to do, a write. The slave out here goes, hey, I'm 68. It acknowledges the master. The slave knows that it has internal registers. So it, it is expecting 
the master to then send the register address that it wants to go after. So then the master sends out the register address 03. The slave says, ack, I have a register 03 and I'm now ready. After that ack, then the master sends the data it wants to send, which in this case will be 77. The slave puts it into register address 3 and then it says, ack, I got it. And then the master says, I'm done with this message and it does the stop bit. So after this packet or this message, 77 would reside in this register right here with an address of three. So now you're kind of, this is getting somewhat complicated because a lot of information is going back and forth in order to simply put 77 hex into this register. You have three kind of packets or little, three pieces of information. You have the slave address, the register address within the slave, and then you have the actual data in here. So now when you look at this, like with the logic analyzer, I swear C can look kind of complicated. It's like, holy moly, there's a lot going on, but it's all predetermined. It's all defined in the I squared C standard. And this is everybody that has to adhere to the rule. So that's kind of what we're learning here. Okay, so that's great. Now, you actually can also write blocks of data to registers, okay? And you could obviously just do a message that writes to one of the register addresses and then you could stop. Then you could do another one that goes to another address and then stop and then another one and stop. But there's a feature within I squared C where if you wanted to write a block, the way that the slave can handle that is it will automatically increment the, the register address for you, okay? So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> let's say that we wanted to go to address three and within the slave, and we were gonna write three bytes of data. So we basically wanted to fill up address three, address four, address five. We can do this all in one message by just sending the data byte after byte after byte within the same message. So let's let's break down the what this you know message would look like. The master says start. I want to start a message and it's gonna give out the slave address, 68, and then the right transaction, okay? That starts the message. The slave says, ack, I am here and I have an address called, or I am address 68. The master then says, I am going to access, I'm gonna to write to register address 03, so it sends the register address next. The slave says, ack, I have that I have that register address and I'm ready to accept data. The master then says, here's the first piece of data. It writes 3-3. Three, three. The slave says, ack. At this moment in time, the slave automatically increments the register address that it's going to write to. So it takes its internal register address and moves it to four in preparation for there being another byte of information coming from the master. If the master is going to send it, the master can just simply send another byte of information. In this situation or this example, it would be 44. So it then writes 44 into that register. The slave says, ack, I got it. Thank you. In preparation for the master potentially sending yet another byte, the I squared C slave then increments its internal register address from four to five. And now it's ready to accept data into five. The master in this example says, here's five, five. And the slave says, ack. <laughs> and so after that, here's the information which is put in here, three, three, four, four, five, five. And it's written three bytes into these registers. The slave is prepared to receive another byte of information. It has incremented its internal register address uh, location to six and is waiting. So it will just continue to do this forever until the master puts out the stop bit, okay? So that's pretty sweet. Now here's a little warning. The slave will continue to do this until it sees the stop. But this is where you need to look at the slave's data sheet for details. For example, if, if you had a device that let's say only had 16 uh, registers and the master sent like 50 bytes of data, you gotta go into the slave data sheet and figure out what it does in these situations where <clears throat> the master is sending more information than registers in the slave. Because in some situations, slaves will be designed to actually roll back over and then just go back to address zero and start writing again, writing again, and they'll actually overwrite themselves. Other masters, or excuse me, other slaves will get to the last address in their register map and say, that's it, and they will just ignore all the other 
information coming from the masters. So the slave needs it. The slaves are designed to follow the I squared C protocol, but it just they handle kind of the overrun cases differently. Okay. Let's look at reading from a single register slave. And this one's kind of interesting because you're going to see that uh, we actually intentionally use the knack. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. Uh, here is a master, here's a slave, and we want to read this uh, information right here. Okay, we're going to read the value 45. So master initiates the message with the start bit. It provides the slave address, 68, and it says, I want to read. And so the slave out here goes, hey, I'm 68. Ack. Okay, the master says, wow, okay, great. I saw an ack. Now it's going to read the information. So after the slave produces the ack, it then sends the data back to the master. Now here's what's interesting. As a master, you have now received 45. And what the way that I squared C works and what we'll look at in the next uh, few slides here is this ability to read more than one byte out of the slave. So if the master had read this value and sent an ack, the slave would have said, oh, you got the, eight, the data, let me give you some more. And it would have actually sent another byte of data. And so in order for the master to tell the slave, stop sending data, I got it, it sends a knack to it. <laughs> and so in this case, the knack doesn't mean that the master didn't get it. It just means that it wants the slave to stop sending data. So then the slave says, oh, a knack, and it just stops. And then the master can end the message by sending the stop bit. Okay. Once again, though, we only have a single register, so there's really no concept of register addressing. All right, so now let's look at reading from a device that has multiple registers. Okay, so here's our little test setup. Let's say that this I squared C has a slave address of 68. It's got four registers, addresses 0, 1, 2, and 3, and it happens to be populated with A, A, B, B, C, C, and D, D. Okay, so this master is going to try to read from address 2. Uh, it's going to, yeah, from register address 2 to try to retrieve C, C. Okay, this is actually done with multiple messages. Okay, so now take a deep breath. <laughs> The first message is going to be start bit from the master, slave address, and write. The slave says, yes, I am here, and acts it. Then the master writes the register address to, the slave says, act, and then the master stops. Now, think about this. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't gotten any information yet. All it's done is told the slave which address in its register map it wants to write to. That had to be done with a write transaction so that you could move this the information from the master into the slave. But now the next message is not a write, okay? It, it has to be a read because you're taking this information from the slave and moving it back over to the master. That's why you need two different messages. One is a write, one is going to be a read, to get the other piece of information. So reading reading from register addresses is more complicated, but it turns out that the state machines are set up to automatically handle this for you, so you'll see that once we start programming. So now here's what happens. After the first message completes, the slave is put into a mode where it is ready to pump out information from its register address two. The second message has to follow the same I squared C packet structure. So it has to do a start bit, slave address, does, does a read, and then the slave goes, ack, I'm here. But this time, it's going to send the information out back to the master from the address 02, which was received in the prior package. After that, remember, we're reading, so the master can, if it only wants one byte, it gives a knack, and then the I squared C slave, I, the slave says, whoa, Knack, I guess I'll stop doing whatever. The master then ends the second message with a stop bit. Okay. Holy cow. Sort of complicated, but pretty cool the way that this works. <laughs> Two messages. The first message is to write the register address to the slave. And then the second is to read from that location. Now, there is some risk in doing two messages. One of the issues is that you might have multiple masters on the bus. And there is a small chance that 
you could, in between the first message and the second message, another master might try to take over the bus and that would screw up kind of what was happening before ever the slave would be in a weird state because it, it had received the first ma uh, message, but not the second. So to get around that I squared C supports this thing called a second start condition. And just like S stands for start, P stands for stop, S lowercase R stands for second start condition. Okay. <clears throat> and, and I think that means like S repeated. And what this is, is it's an, um, instead of sending a stop, which is taking the bus to a one, it sends a start bit again in the bit period associated with where the start or the stop should have been. And so this tells the receiver or the slave, it's like, whoa, we just did a second start. So we are going to just immediately continue this message without relinquishing the bus. So here's what this packet looks like. You do a start from the master, slave address, and a write transaction. The slave says, ACK, 68 is here, I'm ready. The master provides the register address. The slave says, ACK, I have that register. And then the master initiates a second start bit. It does a second frame immediately by doing a slave address and a read. Note that this is the second message and it's a read. That's different from the first message, which was a write. The, the slave says, ACK, I'm ready. And then the next eight bit periods, it pumps out its information CC back to the master. To end it, the master sends a knack because when reading, if it doesn't send a knack, then the slave would get ready to send the ne next piece of information. Once the master's done, it sends the stop. This is exactly the same in functionality as sending two individual separate messages, but that's called the second start. Okay, let's look at the last case where now we want to read from the slave at a certain register, but we want to read a block of data. What happens here is it's very similar to the way you can write a block of data. The slave will actually automatically increment the register addresses by one, and each time the master reads, it'll just read from the next location in memory. So it, again, we're doing a read from a register, so we need to do two messages. First message is to get the starting register address. Start bit, slave address, write, Slave says, ACK, I'm here, I'm 68. The master sends the register address it wants to start reading from. The slave says, ACK, I got that register address and I'm ready. The master stops. At this moment, the slave is put in a situation where it is ready to pump out information at register address 01. The master initiates the second message. Start, slave address 68, read. The I squared C slave says, ACK, I am 68 and I am ready. It then proceeds to send out the information at address 01, which in this example is BB. The master receives BB and sends an ACK this time. That means to the slave, oh, I'm now supposed to send the next location in my register address map. So it moves down to address 2 and sends the information there, which in this situation was CC. The master says ACK again. The slave says, wow, this, we, we're going to keep going. So then it increments its internal register address of uh, kind of counter to three and sends out the information at that location, which is DD. It could keep going forever or quasi forever until the master ends the message with a knack. So then it finally, in this situation, it reads three bytes, sends a knack, and then it stops the whole thing with a stop bit. Okay. Again, you can do this with a uh, repeated start bit. The first part is going to be setting the register address using a write message. So it starts slave address write, ACK, zero, uh, register address, ACK. Then instead of a stop in this bit period, the master sends another start, and then it starts the second message, which then again goes slave address read. Slave says ACK and starts pumping it out. BB, master says ACK. Slave sends CC, master says ACK. Slave sends DD, master says, I'm done, knack. <laughs> okay, it does look a little complicated, but it's, it's intended to be, uh, it, to handle a lot of different use models. So that's how you, you conceptually do addressing slave registers in I squared C. All right, that's it. And as always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.